How's it going? Our energy flows in a concentric or spiraling pattern inside the body. And this happens all the time. And the most potent is during sleep, yeah, where our autonomic functions and the physical functions slow down and the energy surfaces up. Yeah. So from the brain, the energy descends to the body to nourish our cells. Yeah. And the physical energy rises to the brain yeah, to give it life and power. Yes, the physical energy yeah, we call the Kundalini energy, yeah, the uh, Pana bio energy, is the one giving power to the brain energy, the Prana. So the Prana descends down and this becomes a healing force. So therefore, sleep is very important. Sleep itself is a mudra. Yeah, it's a way for us to channelize our energies yeah, unconsciously. Yeah, it's important. So if, for example, um, you miss your adequate number of hours of sleep, yeah, I suggest yeah, so you make it up by doing short naps, maybe during your afternoon break, yeah, so maybe 15, 20 minutes there, you know, would help you revitalize the system. Okay. There are physical techniques too, which yeah, mimic yeah, the spiraling uh, concentric pattern of the breath, and we call them mudras. All right. Mudras are a combination of physical gesture, yeah, internal and external, yeah, the eyes, the tongue, and the fingers. And then by doing these mudras, yeah, so we assist yeah, the easy flow of energy inside the body. So for today, let me teach you, let me share with you a very simple mudra, and everyone can do this. All right, so in a cross-leg position like this, yeah, so cupping your hands, so your right hand on top and your thumbs touch. Yeah. And this is the Dhyana Mudra. So if you notice that uh, there's this um, soft yeah, bending of our limbs and the joints, yeah, from our toes to the ankle, up to the knee, and it goes inside. Yeah, and the same thing happens in the arms and the shoulders. From the hands cupping, yeah, passing through the wrist and the forearms, the elbows, yeah, and then the shoulder behind the collarbone, and it goes up and it goes to a crisscross pattern. Yeah, good. So this is Dhyana Mudra. Right. And the head is slightly bowing over the heart. The elbows are soft. And the weight is shifting to the back. And in here, you may practice your natural breath meditation, or you can chant the Om, or any um, spiritual practice you enjoy doing. Yeah. For me, I enjoy practicing the Om. Om. that or you might chant it short and consecutively seven times yeah long breath in Om. 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 So seven short ones, then one long, and then inhaling, exhaling, and then you repeat it again. All right. So the Om Mantra yeah, is also a mudra, because through that, so we allow the tongue to move in distinctive ways inside. Yeah. And yeah, as we do the chanting, especially the Om, so we channelize our energy by using the tongue and, of course, the vocal cords. Dhyana Mudra. All right. So other mudras, yeah, which I use, yeah, I cup yeah, one hand. Yeah. For example, in this position, since my left is higher than the right, so I use my left hand under and then the right hand on top. 
you're in here, you follow the line again. So remember my lesson about this, yeah? So like this from the fingertip, yeah, to the wrist, and to the forearm, the elbow and up. And you're doing your trataka, yeah, shakarma. And then you're gazing, yeah, in a lower or a sloping down trajectory, yeah. So you're looking down the fingertips, the same, yeah. So, but the trataka is a cleansing practice, but, yeah, this also mimics and agrees with, yeah, the flow of the energy, yeah, and then just cupping there. And then same thing, bowing the head, yep. So sometimes I use this if I do my pranayamas, yeah, or if I do my meditation, my chanting. Now, for example, you, know, you want to change legs. So the right leg is inside, and the left is on top. Now it's the right hand cupping, and the left hand on top. So if you notice, yeah. So at the end of it, yeah, the final position, the elbows are aligned, yeah, and this beautiful line of your body. And the head is bowing down to open the pathway which yeah, connects the top of the spine and the bottom of the brain, yeah, where the breath enters the body. Yeah. As you inspire the breath, it pierces the medulla oblongata, and most of it goes to the brain, and or um, most of it goes to the body, and um, a fraction of it goes to the brain. Yeah. So breathing in from there goes up and down, and exhale. And then by channelizing, of course, yeah, our awareness, so you want to send more inside the brain. So you can do another mudra, yeah, in conjunction with this, lifting your eyebrows up and lightly crimping your forehead, inspiring. Om. So breathing in, ascend. The outer body drops, the inner body softens, inspire, and repeat it again. Good. So those are your mudras, which are doable. Yeah. Dhyana. Yeah. You're using your optic nerves and crimping your eyebrows up. Right. Or you might also do one in the Dhyana mudra and one in the Chin mudra. Yes, uh, just be mindful of which uh, arm is on top, depending on which leg is crossing and uh, opposite. Yeah, if the right leg is inside, the right hand is cupping. If the left leg is outside, the left hand is on your knee. If you're doing, for example, other sitting positions, yeah, uh, siddhasana, for example, the siddhasana, good. Yep, or the swastika asana. And in here, there's less space to cup the hands. So what you do is the opposite hand resting on that space. Good. And then right here. Good. And still, it's, since it's the right leg is under, the left hand is on top. If you're doing the other side, for example, if the left leg is under, yeah. Therefore, yeah, so the opposite hand rests on your right foot and your right hand is on top. Yeah, it is the same. Yeah, the cross leg position. If you're doing Padmasana too, you apply that principle. You see your top leg, yeah, you use that to support the other arm. So there's this line. Yeah. Yeah. Easy flow of energy and the head bowing down and you practice your method. Yeah, so try that. Yeah. So that it really helps you relax the mind because it makes the body so, I say, uh, passively and then restfully positioned. Yeah. So you don't tighten, you don't clench, and then you don't force your body to yeah, act in distinctive ways just for us to do the mudra. Yeah. Yeah. So by allowing yeah, the body to just go and agree with that inner flow of energy spiraling. Yeah, it's not perfectly upright, neither horizontal. It goes in a swaying motion. And by doing this con uh, concentric motions, using the external and the eyebrows and the tongue inside, uh, so we assist our practice of energy channeling, meditation, pranayamas. But again, yeah, sleep is important. Sleep itself is a powerful mudra. Yeah.
Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next video. Namaste. Bye.